get in the shot. You want to get in on the shot? Get me in the shot. This is supposed to be B-roll. Grind life. How long you been fishing for? Uh, since the day I could walk. Pretty gnarly storm. Chilling at the bowl landing right now. Waiting for it to pass. Rain just kinda got done. It's about six o'clock. Um, I'm trying to film kind of a slip bobber tutorial here for like the last week. I've just been too busy um, to really do it. So hopefully in the next two hours I can go out, catch some walleyes and show you guys everything you need to know about slip bobber in this time of year. All right, we have our first one just dropped. Reel up till I get weighed. Oh, oh, that did not take long. It couldn't even get the third bobber out. It doesn't feel real big. We're gonna full flip that guy. There's a nice, uh, about 17, 17 and a half incher right in there. There we go, there's our first walleye of the evening. We're gonna get that guy back. Bobber down. Hooked up. <laughs> Got him. Doesn't feel super big. Actually, he's staying down decent though. Another nice walleye. There, buddy. Got him. Another one about 18 inches. 17 and a half, 18 right in there. Beautiful bread and butter Northwoods walleyes right here. Let me get them unhooked, let's see what he ate. We're gonna go through all the rigging, all that good stuff here in just a second. I'm gonna go ahead and let that guy go. All right, so we just caught that fish. Um, fish number two, and uh, time to go over some rigging stuff. How I like to rig my slip bobbers. Um, I like to rig them primarily one way, but there is one other way I'll rig them uh, depending on depth and how shallow these fish are. Um, I basically do the same thing every time. This is a 16th ounce fireball jig. I think this is called a fireball. Hook's a little bent out now, but uh, any of these wide gap, short shank jig hooks, um, I've had extremely good luck with. A lot of people say, why don't you just run a single hook? Um, I like the speed at which this gets down there at. The, the, I also run an egg weight above that. So this is about eight pound fluorocarbon. I got three feet of that, then a swivel, then I run an eighth ounce egg weight, sliding weight, whatever you want to call that. And I really like these bobbers. I'm not sure what they're called. Phil makes them. Um, I've had extremely good luck with these. One thing you absolutely want to do is make sure you're getting bobbers that have these brass grommets. And you'll see them right on the end when you buy them. Phil makes a, a bunch of great ones. And then obviously you got your main line, which is really, I prefer mono for doing this. Um, sometimes if I'm gonna be throwing like a really long way or uh, rigging like really big minnows under floats or something like that around braid. But for the most part, I like using mono. And then, uh, you know, just your standard slip bobber slider. Um, and then uh, the slip bobber not so pretty simple there um, the other way I'll do it is if I'm fishing like very shallow like if I'm slip bobber in like five feet sometimes I'll run just a single hook and then I'll peg this weight in there or put a split shot up above that but when I'm fishing a little bit deeper out here like I am right now um, you know deeper than basically 10 feet I really like this setup right here the other reason I like this is it's all sinks very quick you got weight here you got weight in the head it's getting down to those fish very quick I'll even put a lot more weight up here as the summer goes on because I really want my bait to get right in front of those fish right when I mark them immediately. And uh, almost you're almost sharpshooting those fish with a bobber. It's an extremely effective way to fish. Um, a lot of times when fish really don't want anything else. And a lot of times in this early summer, midsummer period, it's extremely difficult to beat a leech dangled up above their head. Sir, would you like to catch a walleye? Well, you want to state your name? Uh, it's Hayes Barnaby, Hayward, Wisconsin. Finest. <laughs> I 
All right, we are back. Drop the trauma motor. Spot lock in position. Throw some leeches out. Let this guy step the hook a few times. Ooh. Redemption. <laughs> I just gave Hazel a little talking to him. I'm gonna grab that thing like a bass guy. Don't lose it, man. We don't wanna we don't wanna have to catch more than we need to. You lose this one, I don't know. There we go. Um, Time to shout me a phone call says they need to get out here. The bite's hot. Literally predicted a bite within the first five minutes. And we've probably been out here for six minutes and this would be the second bite. Oop, there it goes. Right on. Alright guys. Bobber down. Got him. <laughs> We're hooked up. We only have one rod left in the water right now. Other two went off. This is fish number three. Probably well, less than 10 minutes for sure. Another nice walleye. Another good eater sized fish. Hey buddy. We are on some fish right now. Right on. Hooked up. Woo! Hooked up with another beautiful Hale Wisconsin walleye. Cradle. Hooked up. <laughs> we still got walleyes laying on the floor. We got walleyes on. Things are hot. Things are heavy. I like it. I'll grab my neck. It has a walleye in it. Maybe I'll just hand that in this one. Show me how it's actually done. Doing a good job. Trying to botch it. <laughs> This is fun when you get in a pot of fish like this. Slip bobberin's an absolute blast. Not a whole lot of just sitting around waiting for them. Mostly, uh, you know, if, the, if you're dropping a leech on a fish's head, he's probably gonna bite it. And that's what we're doing right now. All right, so when I'm trying to pick out kind of like a key piece of structure, or what I call focal points or swing points um, on a bigger piece of structure. Right now we're fishing a lot of humps, whether that's weed humps, rock humps, whatever it is. We're kind of slip bobbering. We can't obviously cover the entire hump at one time. So what I'm looking for is kind of like the key points on the entire spot. And uh, you know, on a rock hump, that would be like a couple of larger rocks. On a uh, weed spot, it might be a steeper edge, a point that comes off the weeds. So as I kind of come into this rock break here, I'm out here on the, one of these tips. And a lot of times what I've looked for are corners, just like one like this right here, maybe this one over here, and maybe this one right here. And then what I'll do is I'll actually flip over to my side imaging, which I always keep on a hotkey. And you can see this is big rock as I come up on here. So I got my looking left and right 50 feet each side. You can see it come up on that sand break and then you can see those big boulders right on top. And that's really what we're keying on for a slip hour bite like this. Kind of a very specific spot where these fish are probably gonna congregate or we can count on them congregating. It's a spot that has more characteristic than anything else. Now, a lot of times I'm not really looking at a lot of sonar this time of year as far as just finding fish goes. Um, and that's because these fish are still kind of scattered. A lot of times in May and June, um, you know, you just saw us pull six fish off a spot in like 10 minutes. But what I mean by scattering is they're more layered across the bottom versus vertical stacks of fish. So that's a lot of times what, uh, you know, I'm not really using sonar to necessarily say there's a fish, there's a fish, there's a fish. I'm getting on these key spots and structures that I think have fish, and if I drop a leech right on their head, I'm assuming they're gonna bite it. So that's kind of the game plan right now. You can see if I flip back to my side imaging, I'm right on top of this hump right now, and it's a lot of sand both side to side. So as I keep driving along here, you know, Side image is a great tool to essentially find the sweet spots on a spot. So now you can see I've got a little bit of gravel and rock coming in over here on my right side, a little bit starting on my left side right now, and it's actually coming up to what I would call the crown of the reef at this point. So you can see here's the high spot. We got a nice chunk rock here, we got a nice chunk rock here. Flip over to sonar, not really much going. There's a pot of walleye right there, just thick as can be. That's what we're looking for. We're definitely gonna go back and slip bobber on those fish. You can see they're just off that crown. Go back to side imaging again. You can see that's actually the transition line where our rock and our sand meet. So a lot of these fish are running transitions. That's how you use sonar to essentially pick apart a larger piece of structure, find those focal points, and then go back, drop some leeches on their head and catch a bunch of fish. Stay tuned. 
Good job. Couldn't Ooh. even get the second bomber Ooh. out. And I do believe we got nice walleyes on. I'm gonna Oops. take a guess and say this is a nice walleye. I'm gonna grab the net. She's looking big dog. Yeah, oh. another beaut. That's why you spend a little bit of extra time. Get good at looking at sonar. Find those hot corners. Throw the bobbers back into them, and you can almost guarantee that a fish are up there. Like that there one. Is. You guys are gonna catch them. Oh, oh. Set up right, throw it back into some fish. You can almost guarantee you guys are gonna catch a whole bunch of walleyes. Tom, dude, we should do a really nice, to end this video, a really nice sunset. Hooked up. We are on. You gonna scoop it for me, boy? I got it, buddy. This is just too much fun when it's like this. Makes it hard to leave. <laughs> <laughs>